Treasury Department is your symbol of service and protection and has been since 1789. Its responsibilities are great and its duties far-reaching. Through its many subdivisions, it comes in direct and personal contact with every United States citizen. The Treasury Department maintains the oldest United States Naval Service, the Coast Guard. It controls merchandise crossing our borders and prevents smuggling. It is responsible for the collection of internal revenue. Enforces federal narcotic laws. Suppresses counterfeiting. And finally, engraves and prints the money you use. The making of paper money requires the precise skill of individual artists and steel engravers. No one employee engraves a complete design. All the separate engravings are eventually combined to form one composite design from which is prepared the multiple plate used in the actual printing. Here, still another specialist is involved, the printer, expertly polishing the plate with the palms of his hands so the clear, sharp images will result. The sheets of banknotes pass through trained fingers and under practiced eyes as one complicated process after another sends them on their way to final completion. If a counterfeiter were to duplicate exactly a United States banknote, he would have to possess not only the combined skills of a great many artists, but all the elaborate equipment as well. Or there is no question that each individual note made here represents the finest example of the engraver's art. Yet counterfeiters have been trying to duplicate U.S. currency from revolutionary days right on up. These are counterfeit notes picked up by the Secret Service during the past 85 years. Despite the fact that each can be detected as counterfeit by careful and alert citizens, thousands of people are needlessly victimized every year. Mostly the general public, small merchants, neighborhood tradespeople. Well, Mrs. Flaherty, how's business? It's good at noon. We got a nice crowd. Our dinner trade's awful slow, though. It'll pick up. Of course it will. If I do say so myself, we set a fine table. You ought to come over sometime. I will. Next week, maybe. Excuse me. Fred. That's one of them, all right. Thank you. Is there something wrong? Mrs. Flaherty, do you remember where you got that bill? The 20. Mm -hmm. It was around noon, the rush hour. I was very busy. It was a young, dark fellow with a mustache. It's good, isn't it? It's good counterfeit. Counterfeit? You should watch these things, especially in a bill of this size. I've got to turn this into the Secret Service. I can have it back, can't I? I'm afraid not. You're just out $20. But I can't afford it. I don't see how they can expect me to take this loss. People who handle money have to learn to spot the bad when they see it. It's their only protection. I'm awfully sorry. Mrs. Flaherty's bill was sent to the Secret Service Laboratory in Washington. Here, counterfeit bills are analyzed for distinctive characteristics. Mrs. Flaherty's bill, it turned out, had some very distinctive and rather familiar characteristics. Remember this note, Chief? Yes. It's the old Stewart note. Oh, no. Don't tell me this has come out of retirement. Uh, after three years. New crop, too. A million of these phonies floating around isn't exactly a happy idea, is it? Yeah, it's fresh, all right. Almost perfect. Think Stewart would know about this? He might. But he didn't have the plates. We knew that when he took the rap. That case was a heartbreaker. Could break your heart again if they fled the country with this stuff. Why don't you drop in on it? He might talk. His address is still Atlanta. Why not? We haven't any choice. Stuart hasn't got
got such a bad record here, has he? It's very good. Model prisoner. He's too sharp to break any small rules. I'll talk to him now. Bring Stewart in. Yes, sir. You got another seven years to go? It'll be cut to four and a half with his good time. <laughs> That's all, guard. Yes, sir. Stewart, this is Mr. Raymond of the United States Secret Service. You don't seem very glad to see me. Sit down. Mr. Raymond wants to talk to you. Familiar? Well, what would I do with money in here? Look at it. $20 bill. A couple of bets at the $10 window, a tip to the cigarette girl. Ah, uh, Stewart, don't snub an old friend. At the time of your arrest, you had $50,000 worth of those 20s all phony in your possession. I did? Just because you got caught, don't get sore at the money. Oh, I'm not sore. Okay, it so happens that we are. The bills are popping up again, mostly out west. Frisco, Reno, Vegas, and L.A. I'm amazed. I don't think so. Come again. Well, you figure I've been uh, floating about the window? Don't kid with me. You know what I mean. Somebody's got those plates and is circulating the money. You might know who that somebody is. No, I don't get around much socially anymore. Stuart, you've got seven more years to go. A little cooperation might cut that down. Might even get you a recommendation for an early parole. Stool pigeons don't live long, Mr. Ryan. I don't expect you to be a stool pigeon. I'm asking you to be loyal to yourself, to think of your own welfare. Your mob's in action again, but what are they doing for you? Nothing. And what are you doing for them? Seven more years. Who's printing that counterfeit money? I didn't know then, and I don't know now. Who was your contact man? He was a guy named uh, Joe. He always wore dark glasses and had his uh, hat clamped low over his face. If he had a face, I never saw it. Gee, I guess I really couldn't tell you what he looked like. Is that all you have to tell me? That's all. Stuart, I guess I owe you an apology for interrupting your routine in the prison and dragging you into the warden's office. I misjudged you completely. You must really like it here. Like it well enough to consider it home sweet home for the next seven years. All right, Warden. Think of the next seven years, Stuart, and try to refresh your memory. All right, guard. What do you think? Oh, I think he'll come around. Some weeks later, on a federal district court order, Tris Stewart was being transferred to Kansas City in the custody of a United States Deputy Marshal. Uh, no rest for the wicked. I'm doing all right. Hey, you mind raising your flipper? You're in central time now. Gained an hour. Yeah? I can sure use it. Look 
Mountain's empty. Hand it over. Come on, give me. Afraid I might hurt myself? You hurt anybody that looks sideways at you, Stuart? No, not this trip. I do what I'm told. <laughs> now, Marshal and me sure put on a good act in that bus. I'll start cheering when you give us some results. In case you're wondering, I've got another gun here. Loaded. What's the matter? Don't you trust me? There are limits, Stuart. Calling SS 972. Calling SS 972. Over. This is SS 972. Go ahead. Agent Foreman reporting. We're on Highway 40. I've got the boy. Did everything go all right? Yeah, no trouble. Perfect cooperation. Good. Keep checking with us. Right, when we get to Kansas City. Well, how's the feel to be free? I'm not complaining. Why should you? You're getting a square shake. All we want are those plates and your pals. Don't worry, I'll find them. Only give me a little time. The quicker you do it, the quicker you'll be considered for parole. We'll keep our end of the bargain. Listen, I'm pulling my end, too. Only keep out of my hair. I got a lot of contacts to look up, old leads. Not gonna help any with you tagging along, you know. Sorry. Until we catch this bunch, you and I are gonna stick so close together when you scratch your back, you'll be scratching mine. Get used to it, Stuart. Long distance? Uh, that call to Chicago, Fred Simpson. Any answer yet? Uh, well, keep checking, huh? Bill Branch is out. Call me back. That call to Chicago is still a nice, too. The operator, keep checking. You're doing great. Yeah. Gum? No, thanks. By the way, whatever happened to your old girlfriend, Meg Dixon? She's not a bad looking dame. Let me see. Nosy bird, ain't she? Where is she now, Tris? She's not in Detroit. We checked there. Oh, no, there she got married. Last I heard, she was living in Newark, raising a family. You're lying, that's for sure. Yeah. Okay, you tell me that. I wonder what's become of Meg. Sounds like a title to a song. Yeah, that crummy glass. Let's Sell. Try to catch it. Let's see. <laughs> Mr. Hackett, I don't have the right change for this 10. I'll have to give you a lot of singles. Keep it. I don't like a lot of singles. Too bulky. Weighs me down. You travel light, don't you, Mr. Hackett? Well, I travel. And I may be moving on if you don't show a little interest. Los Angeles is one town I can do without. Be careful. You're talking to a native daughter. I might report you. OK, when you do, tell them I don't like their brand of hospitality. I can die of lonesomeness here. Try and hang on a while, won't you? You might change your mind. Uh, 
That's quite a guy. He must own a few dozen oil wells, or else he thinks cigarettes cost ten bucks a pack. If you told me he was lonesome, I'd encourage him. You mean if you were a girl? Well, sure, I... Hello? Well, hello. I thought your big night was over. I hope not. Not yet, anyway. I, uh... I thought you might need a little protection. Yeah, from who? Oh, from lone wolves. Maybe a wolf pack, even. Oh, that's very nice of you, but who protects me from you? Hey! Look at me. Don't you see character written in this face? Uh, you are sort of a character. But I prefer to go home alone, if you don't mind. Well, shall we say goodnight or wait until? Not until what? Until a prowl car comes along and I yell at them. I'll go quietly. I don't want anything to disturb what's going to be a delightful relationship. You can hope, just like anyone else, I guess. It's me, Tris. Oh, honey. Oh, I'm so worried. I read about your escape in the papers. I thought they'd find you. Who's that creep following you? Nobody. Just a barnacle hangs around the club. But what happened? Tell you later. Where do you live? Not far. I'm out of a prayer. The feds tapped me for a stool pigeon. They even sprung me, the dopes. Then I sprung one of them. <laughs> Imagine, Tris Stewart, playing ball with the cops. So all I got left now is some blind alley tips and an empty bag in their hands. No cream, sugar. What do you mean, no cream or no sugar? Confusing, yeah. Oh, honey, I'm glad you're back. I like it. I like you, too. Tell me, anybody been prowling around? Cops, I mean, asking questions? No, nobody. Not since I moved out here and changed my name to Laurie Fredericks. That's good. Come here. We'll work fast. A strike, then Mexico for keeps. Does that sound good? No, soon can we go any? Uh, first, I gotta get in touch with my ex-partner, Sam Hooker. That dirty rat getting rich off my plates while I rot in a pen. I'll pay him a little surprise visit tomorrow morning. It won't take long to make a deal with him. And after that, baby, it's Mexico for you and me. <laughs> Sure, go ahead. Just like that, huh? Tomorrow. Good work. All right, stay with it. Well, if they took the census tonight, we'd have one more bad citizen in our midst. Let me guess. Could it be my ex-roommate, Stuart? None other. Just blew in. He's with the Fredericks girl right now. I'd like to have ten minutes alone with that guy for the mauling he gave me in Kansas City. On the house, too. As they say, orders are orders. Yeah, but I'd still like ten minutes alone with him when the orders didn't read, pull my punches. Could have flattened him a dozen times. Sure you could. And you'd still be listening to him making phone calls. And we'd still be tracking down false leads. Except for your pride, it's better this way. This private? Not at all. Glad to see you, Downey. I want you to meet Fred Foreman. This is John Downey. Glad to know you. He's oh. the one who let Stuart give him the slip in Kansas City. <laughs> Good luck, Downey. When you see Stuart, give him ten bells from me, will you? I'm looking forward to it. I've got news for you. Stuart's in town. Oh. Where is he? Well, at the moment, he's with the girl. Huh. Well, don't look so unhappy. After all, it's his girl. I'm beginning to realize that. Cigarette? No, thanks. 
the matter? Won't you give you a tumble? Just for tips. Maybe I'm losing my touch. Maybe you never had it. Or else she's too smart for you. How about it? Oh, I don't think so. As far as she and everyone at the club's concerned, I'm just Johnny Hackett. A very shady character. They bother to look me up. I've been everything from a card shop to a confidence man with a record to prove it. I know Hackett's record. Every night he went home and robbed his own mother. Well, I haven't done that yet, but... <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, according to the report, Stewart starts moving in the morning. He's after the plates. Fine. And uh, who has the plates? Ever hear of Sam Hooker? Uh-uh. Welcome, I'd say. Do I have to blast my way in to see my old partner? What? what, what Wake what? up. Open your eyes. Don't you remember me? Oh, I am remember. It's you, Tress. I didn't recognize you right off the bat. It's been such a long time. Didn't you know I was out? No. No, madame. I haven't been feeling well, Tress. I, I don't get around much anymore. I stay pretty close to home. Oh, but, but now it's your back. What do you say you and me have a little drink, huh? Have a drink, Tress. This isn't exactly a social call. But you are glad to see me, aren't you, Tress? That all depends. On what? On how good a partner you've been to me. I've been doing time for the two of us, remember? That gave you a chance to grow a sweet bankroll for us. Where's my share? I lost it, Tress, but I can... Where's the plates? Have a little drink, Tress. Where are they? I sold them. I was as good as Mary. No, 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 Tress. Tress, I was, I was going to stash them away, but, but things got awfully tough after they nailed you, and plates was hot, and I got scared, and I lost my nerve, and, and I, I saw them. Where's my cut? Lost it, just like I lost mine. Lost all the dollar ponies, and cards, and dice. And my luck's been awful bad. You don't know how bad. Who's got the plates? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Does his name come to you now, huh? Sylvester. Jack Sylvester. Sylvester, huh? He used to be one of our distributors in the East. Yeah, where is he now? I don't know. If you hold back any more dope on me, I'm thick. He's in a Hollywood, the Grand Deli. <laughs> Tris, Tris, don't, don't, I can win it all back, please. Tris, Tris, Tris. Looking for someone? Jack Sylvester in? 
Business or personal? A little bit of both. Who wants to see him? Just tell him it's an old friend. Fell outside, says he's an old friend. What's he look like? Hello, Jack. It's okay, Mac. Aren't you glad to see me? Uh, sure. Sure, Tris. You should have phoned me. I could have met you someplace. I don't like you coming here. bring a load of trouble to an old friend? I came to L.A. because they're looking for me in Kansas City. That's 2,000 miles between me and a pinch. You could be wrong. Uh, of course, I'm just telling you for your own good. Well, what's on your mind, Tris? I'd like to get into action again. Maybe you could help me. Maybe. I uh, suppose you know that Sam clipped me for those plates. Uh, too bad. Yeah, isn't it? But you got the plates. So what? So I'd like to buy a little merchandise. Listen, Tris. You're on your uppers, and what you're talking about takes real dough to swing. I know that. I can raise it. It's got to be strictly cash and carry, and nothing less than 25 Gs. I'll sell you a chunk for that, nothing less. Okay, I'll raise it 25. Oh, I'll need a little eating money. As a pair, eat. Okay, I'll be back with the 25 G's. Cash on the line. That dame must eat, sleep, and wash to rumba music. She sure loves her South American way. You'd think the record would break or wear out. I think what happened? Did you see Hooker? Yeah, I saw him. He sold me out. To Jack Sylvester. So I had a little talk with Sylvester, and I think we got a deal cooking. Honey, please don't take any chances. I've been worried all afternoon. Yeah, we'll stop worrying. I know what I'm doing. Are you sure you weren't following? Can you ever be sure? Anyway, I took out insurance just in case. I've been changing from streetcars to cabs to buses on. About five miles, I'm sure, here in the house. Yeah, there's some in the icebox. Relax. Sit down. You know, they say Mexico's a wonderful place to relax. Oh. I read about it. Yeah. I'll tell you what else it's a wonderful place for. American money. A good old buck. Down there, they're starving for it. I could push a quarter million worth of phony on them just like that. Mm, I'd settle for half of that. Half? More, maybe. The only trouble is I gotta have real dough to swing it. Everybody has that trouble, honey. It's a one thing in the world there's never enough of. You know what I need? I need a nice, friendly safe. Forget it. I don't think we should risk anything like that. Safes can be real trouble. Not if you know how to open them. Tell me, baby. What's the weekend take at that club of yours, huh? I don't know. Yes, you do. Come on, tell me. I don't know. How much? Tell, tell me. I want 17 or 18,000, but honey, I'm afraid. To help? No, no. You love I... me, don't you? Oh, you know I do. But can you get away with it? Yeah, maybe with your help. If Stuart tries to pull off this job, he'll get killed or jailed. Not good. We'll just have to stop him or write off everything we've done so far. We just can't afford to let this man jam himself up. He won't if we work fast. This may be just what we need. Get me to Hollywood Police Station. Yes, sir.
Am I tired? We sure worked you tonight, Sam. You can say that again. Good night, Laurie. See you tomorrow. Good night, Mr. Baker. Good night. Good night, Sam. When you come out of the parking lot next to the club, I start driving towards you. That's right. Now, don't slip up. <laughs> Tris, I'm terribly frightened. Stop it. There's no time for the jitters. All you have to do is start this car when you see me coming. <laughs> Too many cops prowling around. Suppose something happens. Suppose you get hurt. If anybody gets hurt, it won't be me. Not as long as I got a gun. Just you remember to start this heat when you see me coming. Having trouble, lady? No, I just can't stop my car. I, I guess the engine's cold. The first lesson in driving is to turn on your ignition. Oh, yeah, thanks. What are you doing around here this time in the morning? Nothing. I just woke over at the club and I'm on my way home. Who's your boyfriend? What boyfriend? The man that just got out of your car. Well, he didn't get out of my car. Pick him up. Stop. Well, Laurie, everything's squared away? Yeah, Johnny, thanks to you. Ah, uh, forget it. I waited a long time for a date, but I didn't think I'd need a writ to swing it. How much do I owe you? 300 will take care of my end. Fair enough. Thanks. If there's any more trouble, I got 24 hour service. Bye. Goodbye. Bye. Well, Laurie, that is that, to coin a phrase. You really came through for me, Johnny. Why not? I've been in these spots myself. I don't want to kid you, Johnny. Somebody's depending an awful lot on me. Yeah, well, he hasn't been much help to you. Why don't you ditch the guy? Because he needs me, and he needs a break. He's got you. It puts him one up on me. I'd go all out, Laurie, if it'd help you. That's swell of you. But only you. I'm selfish about everything but money. And I just happen to have a little loose change burning a hole in my pocket. That puts you in a class by yourself. <laughs> but I'd rather not be by myself. It's more fun spending it when you got some help. How about it? Well, it's an interesting idea. Think it over. You can always reach me at the Hotel Marguerite. Are you all right? Yeah. What happened? I was worried. Nothing. Sorry I had to run out on you that way, but what could I do? Worked out fine, though. You're out, aren't you? Sure, just like that. All it took was 300 bucks, a lawyer and a good friend. Yeah? Who's a good friend? Johnny Hackett, the guy at the club. I thought you said he didn't mean anything to you. Well, he doesn't, I tell yeah, you. Well, what's he after, then? Nothing. He's not after anything. What's the matter with you? You ought to be glad I had a friend. Well, I'm not, see. I don't like the way this guy's moving in. You're crazy. Just because a guy happens to like me, you start getting ideas. I'd have been in a swell spot if he hadn't come through. All right. What's his pitch, then? I think he's lying low. I know for sure he's loaded. He spends big, tips big. And talks big, don't they all? Think he's a record guy? You don't make that kind of dough selling Bibles. You might be ripe. That's what I've been trying to tell you. 
are you going to do? Look this guy up. He might be interested in the proposition. From me this time. Tris, honey, please let me handle it. You don't know him. And it's time we met. Where does this guy hang out besides the club? Well, it's the Marguerite Hotel, but please, honey, be careful. I'll see you later. What is this? What's the idea of making a play for my girl? I don't know what you're talking about. Laurie Fredericks, the girl at the club. Get up. Next time you even take a look at her, I'll cool you for keeps. If you didn't have a gun on me, I'd beat your brains out. Cheap penny any grifter. Oh, I see. So you're big time, huh? <laughs> I've been rummaging through your gear. By the looks of things, you're not too big. Cold cards, cold dice, I'd say there was quite a bit of room for improvement. I'm doing all right. Yeah? How'd you like to do a little better? No, thanks. I don't like guns. I had something else in mind. Oh, keep it there. Too good to keep. How'd you like to fit yourself into a good deal? Sorry. I don't make deals with strangers. Particularly when their name is Tris Stewart. What difference does that make? I read about that break. You're pretty hot. You ought to be hiding out. Uh-uh. Not when there's a big jackpot ripe for taking. All I need's the right combination. You might be it. Listen, if you thought that, why did you open with a punch on my nose? Yeah, because I was griped at you. But three will get you five. I can make you forget that when you hear my offer. Okay, make it. I'm listening. Okay. If I had 25 Gs, I could stretch it to a quarter of a million. Don't no. interrupt. That quarter million's phony. But so good, it would pass in a bank. And I already got the territory to operate in. That's one racket I know, brother. <laughs> so does the government. Uh, look who's talking. Of course, they don't know about you and your racket. My way, you at least make a strike. Besides, I take all the risks. Even so, I don't like tangling with counterfeit dough. Once you burn your fingers on that, it takes a long time to heal. Didn't I just say I'd do all the work? All you have to do is to rustle up the 25 Gs, can you? Well, the bite doesn't worry me. It's, it's just that it's out of my line. Let me think it over. Well, think hard. I'll know where to find you. Drop in later. If you want to punch something, punch the door first. I'll wake up just as quick. <laughs> no hard feelings. Never heard of this guy, Johnny Hackett. Maybe you don't get around like you used to. This front business has got you anchored. Give me some more dope on him. He and Bugsy McGill used to work the line together. No pleasure boats. Uh -huh. They made three successful trips before the captain got wise to him and invited him to travel by a rowboat. Well, bring him in. Hackett, this is Sylvester. Say hello, boys, and let's get down to cases. How are you? Hello. By cases, he means money, Hackett. I understand you're ready. That depends. Mind if I see the attraction? Try 
try that for size. The skin you love to touch. I have never yet seen its equal, Hackett. I have. In any cash drawer, this is genuine. What are you trying to pull on me? <laughs> he thinks it's the McCoy. How do you like that? I thought you said you knew what the quill looked like. Are you kidding, Hackett? No, it looks real. Let me see it again. Hackett, you're looking at the cream of the crop. That's a plenty fine job, but Uncle Sam didn't make it. Ah, look at that border. Those sharp lines. This one's on the level. Compare them. See the difference? Guess I owe you an apology. Yeah, it's queer, all right, but you have to look awful close. Sorry I didn't tumble the first time, but I had to be sure. Oh, I'll think nothing of it. I'd have done the same thing in your place. Well, I gather you're sold. Next problem is delivery. Any ideas, Tris? Hackett's got to draw this dough first. I'll have to be tomorrow. How about us making a meet someplace in town, huh? Sure, any time after the bank's open, around uh, noon. Noon is fine. Suppose we contact in Hollywood. Someplace along uh, Fountain Avenue? All right, how about between uh, Crescent Heights and uh, Hayworth, on the north side of the street? Fine. Is that all right with you, Hackett? Whatever you say. It's a deal, then. Noon tomorrow. Twelve noon tomorrow. Stuart and I will park on Fountain Avenue between Crescent Heights and Hayworth, north side of the street. This looks like the real thing. We'll have the place staked out. Every man will be covered. But don't close in until you actually see my money pass into the receiver's hands. That'll be the signal. Right, Tony. When I see you hand over the money, that'll be my cue. My boys won't move until I tell them. Good luck. You all have your positions. I'll be in front of the grocery store. When I see our agent hand over the money, I'll take a beer case off a stack and set it on the sidewalk. That'll be your signal to close in. When it touches the sidewalk, not before. Now, I want it understood that nobody makes a move until you get the signal. If you jump the gun, we can blow this whole case and maybe lose a man. So keep your eyes on me. Is that clear? All right. And have your standby cars ready. They may try a getaway. That's all, gentlemen.
Cagey, isn't he? Thinks it might be a trap. I like guys that are careful. Means less chance of a slip-up. Yeah, but I want to get it over with and get going. Chris? Hello, Hackett. Hello. Got your money? Right here. Now, let's see one. Oh, no, no. Just a minute. Uh -huh. Okay. Package. How about my payoff? Hey, what's the idea? What do you mean, Tris? Nothing but scraps of cut paper. If I had to be sure, it might be a trap. You I know, Hackett I don't. You knucklehead pulling a test run on me? Nothing new about a test run. Just playing safe. Yeah, well, let's stop playing. Hackett's on the up and up, and I'm running out of patience. When do we deal? You'll hear from me. You okay in my books, Hackett? How careful can you get? I'll explain it to you later. Let's get out of here. I can sure use this. What a day. Yeah. Here's the money and time to spend it. I'll drink to that. Real money. And no more test runs. You can say that again. I'm a little mixed up. I thought you guys were in a hurry to make a deal. You always waste time like this. Let's face it. Sylvester wasn't sure of you. Why? You might have been working with the cops. OK, suppose you were, and they made a pinch. All that he got would have been a bundle of paper, plain paper. You can't get a conviction on that. Try it sometime. I'm not in that business, thanks. I play for keeps. Well, so do we, Johnny. They just didn't want to take any chances, that's all. You're in now, Hackett. The next trip will be the real thing. No more paper. OK, I'm ready when they are, but the sooner the better. When do you deal, Tris? As soon as I hear from Sylvester. I'll get a hold of you, don't worry. Thanks for the drink. I'll see you at the club. I'll be at the bar spending real money. And for that, you get real service. And Hackett, you can forget about those ten buck tips. You're a member of the family now, kind of a brother. Thanks. That makes it easier. And don't forget, that makes Laura your sister. Treat her that way. That's not so easy. Good evening, Mr. Hackett. Good evening, Laurie. This way, please. Thank you. Johnny. Johnny Downey. How you been, Johnny? I'm afraid you got the wrong party, pal. Oh, not a chance. Well, Betty. Betty, come here. It's been a long time. Hey, I want you to meet the wife. Betty, this is Johnny Downey. You're making a mistake. My name is Hackett. Hackett? Oh, don't give me that. You're Johnny Downey. The guy's plastered. Let him alone, Bill. I'd appreciate it if you would. I, I'm expecting somebody. Oh. Oh, I get it. 
Come on, Betty. The man's right. He's not Tommy. I'm sorry, pal. I should have known. What was that all about? Now, I'll tell you when we get seated. He's a government agent. Government agent? Probably undercover. I hope I didn't tip his hand. You and your mysterious friends. Oh, I tell you, Betty, I knew him when he was in the Army. Military intelligence. Before that, he was in Secret Service. Oh, what a dope I am. Why don't you admit you got the brush? Waiter, two scotch and sodas, please. Uh, yes, ma'am. Secret Service. <laughs> Home early. That rat trap I rented gave me the creeps. Thought I'd come over and have it. Tris, I left some packages out in the hall. Will you help me with them? Which? Which one? I didn't want to talk in there. Tris, Hackett's a cop. His real name's Downey, Secret Service or something. Who told you that? Some customers. They were talking and they said he was an agent with the government. I thought the room might be wired and I All didn't. All right. Let's find out. I'll be quiet. gonna do? We'll play along. Now, listen, we're not dead yet. They still had 25 Gs. No, I'm frightened. Let's get out while we can. Oh, we'll get out, all right. Don't worry. But Hackett's gonna pay our expenses. Now, this is what you do. You stay here tonight. The first thing tomorrow morning, buy us two tickets to Mexico City. Evening plane. Use the name Rodney. Oh, but where are you going? I got a little business to attend to. I'll meet you at the airport restaurant. You got that name straight? Rodney, yeah. That's right. Now, uh, when you leave, use the back door. Make sure that you're not tailed. Stuart, what's up? Just heard from Sylvester. He said to meet him at one o'clock sharp. Where? In front of the hotel. Then he'd take us to the spot. Well, I'm ready if he is. Have some coffee? Nope. You, uh, got the dough? Not on me. I don't make a practice of lining my pockets with 25 Gs in cash. After the last rehearsal, I put it back in the vault. Now you better get dressed. Then we'll go down and take it out. Hotel and wait for Sylvester, hmm? Oh, let's just keep moving. Might be wiser. Well, what's the matter? Anything wrong? Could be. Never can tell. You think we better call off the deal? I already called it off. <laughs> you kidding? You know, Hackett, you remind me of somebody. Like who? Like a Secret Service agent. Now keep driving. Don't be a fool, Stuart. What do you want him up a good chance for? A chance for what? To play Stooley? That was the deal, Stuart. That's why you're out. And that's why I'm staying out. On my own terms, too. 
You had yourself quite a time, didn't you? Playing the hotshot gambler, tipping heavy for smokes, making a play for my gal. Well, why don't you think of your gal, Stuart? Give her a break. Why don't you shut up? Pretty lucky for me I found you out when I did. You know, you're the only link between me and your federal buddies. That's a link I'm gonna have to cut. Just keep driving. I want to show you a beautiful view. Take the money out. Throw it in the back seat. Follow me out. Come on. with intent to kill. I'll sign a complaint. Put him where he can't talk to anybody. Don't worry. If he wants to talk, he'll have to talk to himself. Oh, uh, book him under another name. Just tell the newspaper boys he's a hitchhiker who tried to stick up. We don't want any publicity on this. How would the name of Briggs do? Oh, good as any. Agent in charge, Gunby, please. My mother-in-law's name. I'd just like to see how it'd look on a police blotter. Mr. Gunby, this is Downey. Stewart was tipped off. I'll explain later how it happened, but I'm booking him at Venice Police Station. Well, there goes the case. Wait a minute. It's not dead yet. Why can't I go ahead without Stewart? That's pretty risky. Without him along, they'll be too suspicious. That's a chance I'll take. Stewart can't tip him now. My big worry's Laurie Fredericks. She could fix me good. Unless you pick her up before I contact Sylvester. All right, we'll do that for you. But it's your idea. Where do you meet Sylvester? At his office. That's it, then. We'll be right behind if you leave with him. Good luck. Thank you, sir. Curry speaking. This is Gunby. Is Laurie Fredericks in her apartment now? I think so. We're getting music from her room. Just continue your present operation. Pick her up immediately and bring her to my office. Yes, sir. Gunby says pick up the Fredericks girl right away. Looks like she's gone. Her clothes are gone, too. Well, we'd better make a report. up quick. Uh, to win, Tony. You got a wild hair or something? What's up? They picked up Stuart. You there? No. Laurie saw it. Stuart was just leaving her place. Plain clothesman took him. She phoned me right away. When did they take him? About an hour ago. Plain clothesman, eh? Picking up Stuart for prison escape. Yeah, and it could be Secret Service agents out on a counterfeit tip. How could they get a lead on us? How? How do they ever? All I know is Stuart's hotter than a firecracker and can explode us right into the clink with him. Stuart will never talk. I don't trust anybody not to talk, not when the clamps are really on. I wouldn't answer that, Sylvester. 
probably getting set for a raid right now, trying to locate you. Look, Sylvester, I took a long chance to tip you off. We haven't got any time to waste. It's on your mind. I'm gonna lose myself for good. But first, let's go through with our deal. Where I'm going, I can peddle all kinds of queer without a question. Yeah, that's a good idea. I think I'll find myself a cave somewhere. I'm waiting for Mac to pick me up. You won't have to wait for him. My car's downstairs. Come on. But, operator, a minute ago I got a busy signal. that's been with us a little too long. Take the next corner. We're being followed. Are you sure? Yes. Take the next corner easy and then step on it. him now. I thought he was going to turn with us. You probably imagined it. I never did see any car. Maybe. Stop at the first handy bar you see. Well, I thought we were going to the place. Later, tonight. Right now, I need a drink. Okay. Jack, I get this. Stewart's girl saw him get picked up. Hackett and I are on our way over to the plant. Get everything out of that office and check with me later. Right. I'm looking for Tris Stewart. Is he here? Who are you? I'm Stewart's girl. I thought maybe he might be Wait here. Wait a minute. You say you're looking for Stewart? Yeah, I've got to find him right away. Something's wrong here. It don't add up. What do you mean? I don't know, but I better let the boss handle this. Come on. Can't you use a phone? Listen, sister, where we're going, they don't use phones. How far do we have to go? To the car barn. This is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Try the downtown area. We've covered this. Yes, sir. With the Fredericks girl on the loose, Downey won't have a chance. Unless we can get to him before she does. You're close to transportation. We can always take a trolley. When this is over, I'm taking a boat.
What's this all about? We changed our plans, Al. I thought you were going to deliver it to the other place. And they'll stew it. We make the transfer now and blow, which means closing shop everything. In here. Finish up, boys. We're moving. Pack everything in the truck and let's get out of here. I'll give you a hand. Same as the sample. Yeah, guess so. All right, let's have your money. Mind if I see the rest of the parcel? What's the matter? You afraid we'll shortchange it? For 25 grand, I like to be sure. No offense. Okay. But don't take all night about it. Up, doesn't it? So far, great. With these, I could start my own private Marshall plan in South America. Meet my family, Mama and Papa. Say, those are beautiful. Mind if I take a look? Not at all. How could you looking at masterpieces? I take great pride in these plates. Look at the scroll work, the meticulous care. Yeah, they're real works of art. Treasures. Like paintings. I think so. But anyone can own prints of paintings. I happen to prefer the uh, originals. Uh, tastes are identical in that respect. Would you uh, happen to know who made these? No. No, I'm sorry. The artist neglected to sign his name. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. I'd like to look him up someday. You want to sell these? Uh, not a chance, Hackett. Now, these are my old age pension. The only thing better than money are the plates that make it. Yeah. Tell the boss to come out here. I gotta see him right away. Okay. outside with the girl. He wants to see her right away. What's this all about? Who's she? This is Tris Stewart's girl. What's the idea of bringing her here? You know better than that. But listen, oh, boss. Wait a minute. I've got to find Tris. Is he here? What are you talking about? You know what happened to Stewart. But I don't. I haven't seen him since last night. Who are you kidding? You told Hackett you saw him get pinched. I didn't tell him anything. Don't you know Hackett's a cop? Ask Tris. He knows all about it. Hackett's a cop? Yes, he is. We even found a microphone in my apartment. You come with me. Get yourself lost. Okay. There's a friend of yours here, Johnny. Hackett, where's Tris? What about it? Get up. Harry, right, first come... Chrysler Convertible, License California, 26X548. Chrysler Convertible, License 26X548, has been located. Suspect car is under observance by a motorcycle officer across from the L.A. Transit Company, 7th and Central. SS-742, request the officer to stand by until he can be contacted. You're all washed up, copper. Just a minute, Sylvester. There was more than one car tailing us today. They're ready to move in now. You won't get as far as the stairs if you pull that trigger. I'm used to taking chances. Counterfeiting's one thing, murder's another. Don't put a noose around your neck. They'll hang the whole lot of you, and that includes you, Laurie. You're part of it. I'm not part of anything. You're part of it, whether you like it or not. You're in a bad spot, Laurie, and it's going to get worse. I only came here to find Tris. Where is he? I'll tell you. We locked him up because he didn't keep his part of the bargain. He tried to double-cross you and me both, Sylvester. Don't you see you can't even trust your own pals? It 
Looks like I can't trust anybody. He had to do it to get out of jail. That's right. The police are very powerful. They can make you do most anything. Like talk out of turn. Yes, you are a part of this, and you are in a spot, and I hate to see you getting in any deeper. You're in deep enough. <laughs> Try that area. You try that side, John. Over here. You two go with Agent Downey. You two stay with me. Band inventory ready yet on last night's raid? Yes, sir. All right, bring it in. Have any trouble identifying the rest of the gang, John? Not a bit. Those are faces I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll bet you won't. Put it down over here, Irving. Yes, sir. 
Here are the money and the plates, and this is the inventory. Fine. Sylvester was right. These are works of art. Two hundred and forty thousand in twenty dollar bills. Feel like counting it again? No, thanks. I did that last night. I know every one of those bills personally. Everything's in order. Send these to Washington. Yes, sir. Well, I guess that closes the Stewart case.